Now first, first stanza it called with a determination to accomplish the highest welfare for all sentient beings who surpass even a wish granting jewel, I will learn to hold them supremely dear. Therefore, this is the conventional bodhicitta, you know, with the determination to accomplish this, the highest welfare for all sentient beings. Highest welfare for all sentient beings. Its highest welfare is enlightenment, freedom of all the suffering, freedom of mental affliction. That's the one of the highest happiness, one of the highest peace is the enlightenment. Therefore, you determine it, you strongly, like a mentally, from deep of your heart, determination, determination, it means like a, you, you have to strong, decided, definitely, you know, I will going to have all sentient beings, I will going to uh, lead them to achieve enlightenment, highest welfare, it's enlightenment, who suffers even wish granting jewels, you know, wish granting jewels, it's, it's, the, you know, in ancient time, they saw wish granting jewels means if you find that wish granting jewel, you can pray whatever you wish, it can come. You know, when you pray, say, oh, I need one million dollars, it comes one million dollars. You know, that's called wish granting. Why, whatever you wish, it can, uh, brings you through, through that jewels. They have uh, some special, uh, ancient time, it's called like that. I'm not sure it's real, exists or not, right? But that's kind of wish granting jewel is like that. But who serves even wish granting jewel, which means it's much, much, much more important than wish granting jewels. Wish granting jewels is just only benefit for this life, only gives you a million, million dollars. How much you give money, how much your power, only this life never ever have for your next life. Therefore, enlightenment, to achieve enlightenment, it's next, 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 next life, and a whole your life, and it can benefit. Which granting Jews benefit is only this life. And you know, somebody, if, you, if they gives you one billion dollar, how much, how big, only helps for this life. When we die, we can't take any one dollars, right? Any one rent, you can't take it. How much have only this life? But the enlightenment, helpful enlightenment, to, 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 to get enlightenment, it's not only this life. You can use for whole your future lives. That's why it's called, who surpass, surpass? It's called surpass. Surpass even a wish granting jewel. I will learn to hold them supremely dear. Therefore, I will learn to hold them, whole sentient beings, supremely dear. Therefore, in order to, like when you determine it, your, your decision is, I will, uh, uh, my decision is to accomplish the highest welfare for all sentient beings. My main purpose is to benefit for all sentient beings, which means I will help all sentient beings to achieve enlightenment, freedom of all the sufferings. That's main my purpose, right? Looking to whole beings be free from suffering, be free from mental affliction, all beings to reach, achieve the ultimate goal, the ultimate happiness, which is freedom of all the mental affliction. You know? To go there, this is my, my purpose. This is my sort of like a dream. It only wants to help all sentient beings, not only temporarily seeking the like ultimate happiness to, to lead them to achieve ultimate happiness. That's why, because of that, is I will learn to hold them supremely dear. That bodhicitta mind, where they come from, the base, that kind of wish, that kind of strong desire, wish to achieve enlightenment to sake of all sentient beings, to wants to, I wants to lead them to enlightenment. That kind of strong determination, where they come from, it's based on compassion. That's why in order to generate bodhicitta, we have to generate compassion. I will learn to hold them supremely dear. You know, compassion, which means the dear, feel very close, sense of closeness. 
Therefore, in order to generate bodhicitta, it's not just, oh, meditate bodhicitta. You have to go step by step. Now the bodhicitta, in order to generate bodhicitta and, uh, and, and Buddhists, we have a two different lineage. Like a main, that dharma, that, that practice, you know, it's, it comes from Buddha himself. It's taught by Buddha, but when he taught, then slowly they have two different lineage. It comes two different lineage that are generating bodhicitta through two different lineage. One lineage it comes from Maitreya Buddha. Another Maitreya is the one Buddha called Maitreya, Maitreya Buddha. And then another lineage is come from Manjushri, the Buddha of wisdom. Maitreya Buddha, which means the Buddha of love, and uh, called Mitta, right? Mitta, so love. Buddha of love. Manjushri, which means Buddha of wisdom. Therefore, it spread to different lineage, Maitreya and Manjushri. From Maitreya to Asanga, one of his disciples, his name is Asanga, uh, I think it's in the fourth century, comes. From Manjushri to Nakajuna, one of the Indian great master before the century, it's called Nakajuna. That lineage from Manjushri to Nakajuna, Indian master. Through that, it's all go down to different lineage. Asanga, Wasubandhu, there are so many Indian masters. And same Nakajuna, Chandrakiti, Shantideva, and so many. Go to those two different lineage. The lineage called Sometimes my English is not enough to translate. Uh, Tibetan we call Manjushri uh, lineage called Samotaji, which means the lineage of uh, profound view. The lineage of profound view, which is the Manjushri lineage. And another lineage called Jajin Chuji, which is called uh, the lineage of extent, extensive, extensive deeds, right? Extent, extent, extensive. Extensive deeds. It's the uh, material lineage. Now these two, what's what the definitely like? What's what's the difference between these two lineages? Now, in order to generate bodhicitta, you know that's the way they they have two sort of like a training, two way of training. Now, material lineage, it's it's called sevenfold quite essential instruction of cause and effect. Sevenfold quite essential instruction of cause and effect, which means six causes and the last seventh the result is bodhicitta, right? Bodhicitta, in order to generate bodhicitta, there are the six different causes, so six different states you have to develop. Manjushri lineage is called exchanging, exchanging the self and others, cherishing, you know, that the exchange self and other cherishing mind. Through that you can generate uh, uh, bodhicitta. Now what are the six, six causes? Which means, first, okay, maybe if I go very detailed, maybe sometimes confused. Mm -hmm. if I can try to go very simple way. Uh, in order to generate bodhicitta, bodhicitta, now you know, bodhicitta which means the desire, the desire, wish, individually wish to achieve enlightenment, to sake of all sentient beings. That mind called bodhicitta, right? Very strong desire, I wish I achieve enlightenment. Purpose is to benefit for all sentient beings. That's why you're looking to achieve it. It's not selfish. You know, oh, I'm too much suffering, I don't like, I want to achieve enlightenment. This is not bodhicitta. This is selfish way of putting, you know, your own thing. Here, why I want to achieve enlightenment? I want to help. I want, I want to benefit for others. My purpose is to benefit for all sentient beings only in able to help like a proper way is if you achieve enlightenment. Then you can able to help to other sentient beings. Therefore, they're seeking to achieve enlightenment sake of all sentient beings. That mind is called bodhicitta, right? Mind of enlightenment in English when they translate. Mind of enlightenment, mind who's seeking to achieve enlightenment to sake of all sentient beings. But in order to generate that bodhicitta, first 
you need special compassion. It's called unusual attitude of compassion. Unusual attitude of compassion, which means the compassion is not just wish to free from other sentient beings. It's looking, may, myself, I will going to help them to others. Like a mother, mother when they have the, when their daughter and son, when they got trouble, mother not only, oh, I wish he can free from that suffering, mother taking full responsibility. I will going to help them. Or can I take to him as hospital or there or the, you're looking, you're looking, taking full responsibility. That's kind of compassion called unusual attitude of compassion, which not only wish to free, it's called wish to help, much, much different, you know, much deeper compassion. Therefore, you have a wish to help to all sentient beings. And then you look in bodhicitta. But in order to generate that wish, you need first compassion. Compassion which means wish to free from other suffering, wishing them to be free from their suffering. Therefore, unusual attitude of compassion, it comes from general compassion, wish, wishing them to be free from suffering. But the, in order to generate compassion, it's not easier. Today, we can easily generate compassion for your children, your family, but your enemies are very difficult to generate compassion. Why it is difficult? Because they are mentally, they are very far, right? They are very far. Your own family, you are very close there. That's why much easier for your enemy difficult because they are very far, mentally, it's not physically, mentally very far. Therefore, in order to generate compassion to other sentient beings, first you have to make sense of closeness, like very close feeling, mind of endearment, and a mind of endearment, feel you have to make very sense of closeness, mentally. You have to make all sentient beings like feel like dear, close sense of closeness. It's called mind of endearment. Uh, another word is called affection love. Affection love, which means the love who, like, who feels like very closeness, very sense of closeness. In order to generate that sense of closeness, how can I make sense of close to all sentient beings? It's when remember their kindness, repay their kindness. That's why you have to remember others' kindness. When you real see their kindness, when you appreciate all other sentient beings, their kindness, that will help you to develop affection, love, mind of sense of closeness, right? For instance, in uh, maybe when you go to the restaurant, somebody you don't know, but somebody they say, "Oh, have some tea," and give, when they gives you tea, just when to say, have a, some tea. When you take a this tree, mentally, you become something close to that person. When that person getting small problem, you feel, oh, I'm sorry. Feel like that feeling. Even you don't know, but because of you remember, he's very kind, he gives me tea. That's why you mentally, you become very close. That's why when he's suffering, you just feel, oh, I'm sorry. You feel like a sense of you know, uh, compassion for them. Therefore, in order to generate that compassion, mentally, sense of closeness, affection, love. In order to generate affection, love, one of the best things is kindness. You know, remember others' kindness. Therefore, there are so many kindness there. One of the best ways to think kindness is mother kindness. You know, the mothers, how they help to their children. When you are in baby, when you are in the mother womb, when you come out, the mothers, how much you're taking care of all those. If you look, their kindness is marvelous, right? Mother kindness is much easier and very great kindness. Then when you think about that, it makes you much closer to, to the, your mother's sides. That's why six causes, which means first causes is all sentient being as your mother. You know, seeking all sentient being as my mother. My mother doesn't mean today they are my mother. You know, in the Buddhist, we believe reincarnation, rebirth. Therefore, my previous, previous, or she also been in my mom, or they, she also been in my mom, because my, my life, 
It's beginningless. You know, there's no beginning, like eon and eon, eon. We born and die and born and die and born. Each time you, you're born, you have a parents, you have a mother, you have a mother. That's why they're using that logic. They are all beings. They, they, will, they will be my mom countless times. Therefore, it's called all sentient being is my mother. First step. Second step, remember their kindness. They were mother's kindness, the second, second causes. And remember their kindness. Then third, repay their kindness. They were when you real feel like their kindness, then oh, I have to repay. I have to give back something. Repay their kindness. Then fourth, affection, love, which is called mind of endearment. Because so remember all this kindness and you real wants to you know, repay their kindness. That helps you to become closeness toward others. Mind of endearment, sense of closeness toward others. Affection, love. It's called affection, love. Then after that, compassion. Oh, all those mother sentient beings are suffering. I wish all those beings would be free from suffering. Called compassion. You know, fifth, uh, fourth. No, fifth, right? Then last, unusual attitude of compassion. Unusual attitude, which means not only I wish all to free from their suffering, so I will go to help them, taking full responsibility. May myself will help them to release their suffering. You're taking much deeper. It's called unusual attitude of compassion. I will go to help all sentient beings to free from their suffering. Then when you have that wish, then you say, how can I help to all beings? I am suffering still. How can you help to all sentient beings? It's impossible. That's why, oh, in order to help, I have to achieve enlightenment first. Then I can be able to help. Therefore, when you've got unusual attitude, then you're looking, in order to help, I need very good equipment, enlightenment. Therefore, seeking to achieve enlightenment to sake of all sentient beings, called bodhicitta. That's why the unusual attitude of compassion, then you meditate on bodhicitta. This is the material lineage of how to develop compassion, uh, bodhicitta, and you know, toward all sentient beings. Now, Manjushri lineage, it's, it's not going on that way. It's first seeking equanimity, which means self and others. We all, today, we are not equal, you know. Our mind is very dishonest. Like, you can see all sentient beings here in this planet, we put it into three baskets. The one basket is called basket of closeness, very close basket. There's another basket here, basket of very far. And the next basket, basket of neuter. Not far, not close, neuter. Three basket. All sentient beings, we put into these three basket. All our families, your friends, you put into the basket, it's called basket of very closeness, right? All your enemies in your work, in your neighbor, your family, whoever, something, your enemies, we all put into the basket called basket of very far, far basket. Then neuter, don't care. We, we have no good relation. We don't have good or bad relation. We don't have any relationship. All those neutral people, we put it into the neutral basket. These three baskets, who make it? How it comes? Who create these three baskets? We put into three, three containers, but these three containers, where they come from? Who create it? It's very easy. Our anger, attachment, ignorance, called three poison mind. Attachment make close basket. Anger make far basket. Ignorance make neutral basket. That's the way we're doing our whole life. The drama we be doing, oh, because of my friend, fight it. Because of enemy, do it this way. Because of neutral, do all those tricky things, you know, we're doing, even if we don't know. Every mistake, every bias, dishonest behave, it's created by these three poison mind. We put it into these three. That's why we are not equal to all sentient beings, unequal. When you are unequal, 
your compassion is also unequal. They are not equal compassion. That's why the problem all comes. They were here exchanging self and other cherish by Mitri, um, Manjushri lineage. They are saying, reality, we all are equal, same. But unfortunately, these three poisons creating problems. Therefore, first, you have to generate mind of equanimity, make equal, self and others equal. How can you make equal? Now, how you prove it means because human beings, and you know, all the sentient beings, our nature, our nature is completely same, same nature, which is wish to be peace, happiness, don't want suffering. This is the, our nature. You know, every being, even small insects, when somebody do something, it's running here, there, which means they don't like suffering. Their fear of suffering, that's why they try to get rid of this, try to hide it. They were human beings, every being. Our nature is wish to be peace, happiness, completely same nature. There's nothing any different. Completely same nature. Our right, because of that nature, we have an equal right. Look at democracy, equal right to make your own peace and happiness. I have a right to make my own peace. I have a right to remove my suffering. All other sentient beings have the same right to make their own peace and happiness and overcome their suffering. Then third, our ultimate goal, aim, is completely the same, which is called ultimate peace, ultimate happiness. Now for the religious point of view, you know, from religious point of view, they're using holy words. Some religions call enlightenment, which is Buddhist. Some religions they call heaven. Some religions they call pure land. Some they call nirvana. What is the heaven? What is this pure land? Or what is that enlightenment? Very simple. Ultimate peace. Ultimate happiness. Ultimate peace, ultimate happiness, which means when that happiness, when you got it, it can stay permanently, it can stay whole. And how long you use that happiness, you are becoming more and more happier. It's never ever change to the suffering. When this happiness comes, it's completely happy. Never ever brings other problems together, which is mundane happiness. Today, the, our samsara happiness called worldly happiness are the not real happiness. From Buddhist point of view, it's called suffering of changing, which is today when we say happiness, which means oh, I got money, happy, or I got family, happy, or I promote my power or position, happiness. Those kind of happiness is not the real happiness. These are the mundane, samsara happiness, suffering of changing. It's contaminated happiness. Why it's called contaminated? Because those happiness never ever stay in the same level. It will change. It will change Suffering, either when these things come, same time behind, the other problems come together. They bring some other problems. That's why no children suffering because of children suffering, right? <laughs> Family struggling, wants to be children, 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 because of no children, suffering. Then when you got the children because of children, suffering. <laughs> Every hour problem, because of no car suffering, because of car suffering. Because of no job suffering, because of job suffering, right? Because of no house suffering, because of house suffering. Therefore, it's, these are we call contaminated happiness. It's suffering of changing. When you got it, slowly, it's not going to stay that level. That's why these are unpure, contaminated suffering. Worldly, worldly happiness, which is not guaranteed. The, nature of those happiness is part of suffering. Here the ultimate happiness, which means when you got that happiness, pure, never ever being something, problems. When that happiness, use it, how long you use it, makes you more and more happier. Never ever change to the suffering. If these things are changed to the suffering, that means these are not real ultimate peace. This is just surface, surface peace. You can change that. That's why here, the ultimate peace in religious you know, terms 
using different heaven, enlightenment, whatever they call. You know, each religion has a different words. But this is ultimate peace. Therefore, our goal, all sentient beings, their goal is happiness. That kind of happiness. We heart looking happiness. What kind of happiness? We don't know because we are ignorance. That's why attachment taking advantages, showing this is your happiness. Come here, <laughs> taking us there, working very hardly. Get it. When you got it, no happy. Right? <laughs> Everything is like that. No happy. That's the ignorance. Don't know. But our heart is very pure, wants to be happy. What kind of, what is that? We don't know that. That's why negative emotions, it's the ignorance. It's don't know. That's why they lead you here, there, every, all those things. That's the problem. Therefore, here, our ultimate goal, it's ultimate peace, ultimate happiness, completely same. Our right is completely same. Our nature, which to be happy, completely same. That's the, our main, like a pure sentient beings. Being a sentient, being a human, this is the, our nature. Equal, completely equal. Next level, it's something service level. Then this is my parents, this is, this is the not na real nature. These are the temporary. Temporary conditions comes here. This is the level, or oh, this my, this is, this that. Make divided. And that level, who leveling? Our attachment, anger, ignorance. Three poison mind taking advantages to change that your nature will really pure, but they're using that nature, showing different road. That's why we create three basket, three container here. That's why we are not honest. Therefore, understanding on this way, first, every beings are equal. Equanimity wants to be peace, wants to be happy. When the baby, she don't know what kind of happiness, what this is, but wants happy. That's the nature. Completely same. We have completely same right. We have a completely same goal. Our interesting is interesting is same. Our goal is same. Our right is same. Through that, you develop mind of equanimity toward all sentient beings. Equal. That's they call first equalizing, then switching, then you changing. Now when you make absolute equal, then second thinking disadvantages of selfish. Selfish mind, how much destroy your happiness? How much create the problem? Stress, depression, fear, worry, all this come from selfish. You know, the person when they become selfish, they only thinking self, me, I, only I or me. When the person just only thinking me, 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 their mind become much narrow, small. The only their image is only self here, very small. Persons when their minds become very small, small problems when they appear in your mind seems to be huge, big. Then you fear, then you worry, then you stress, depressed because this is huge, big problems. Big problems, small problems, it depends on your mind. It's not exist by its own. Depend, right? But the, your mind is too small, that's why whatever it appears, it seems to be a huge, big problem. That's why fear, scare, worry, everything comes that. Therefore, every hour, like anger, hatred, attachment, everything, something linked with self. Self, happy, makes something joy, attach. Self, fear, self, unhappy, anger, hatred, you know, this Emotion, jealous, pride, all those emotions, there's something connected, there's link with self. Selfish, selfish. Therefore, when you have very strong, like a sort of like a, the mind who cherish self, your image of self is too strong, too solid. When enemy, when your others, when they come, become much stronger, you see as much stronger. Because self and others dependent, dependent each other. When you make self very solid, heavy, others look like very heavy, very solid, very separated. That's why anger, hatred, attach, 
making all those divided by selfish. Therefore, when those poison minds arise, that will destroy you. your relationship, your dignity, your value, everything, everything finished by those mental afflictions. How much money you have, how much power you have, doesn't matter. The person who he or she full of anger, full of greedy, full of you know, arrogance, that means everyday stress, everyday depressed, everyday worry, everyday fear, every day 24 hours you know it's interesting very rich we making like a our bedroom some fancy bedroom right it's nice fancy those blankets are smooth and whatever <laughs> and nice light and very fancy beautiful person when they go to sleep can't sleep right they can't sleep it's actually the purpose of making these thing is to relax sleep nicely that's the purpose but when the material how much make fancy person when they go to sleep not sleep have to take pills to sleep <laughs> right these are people who lives very really, very really simple nothing that bad nothing these kind of things sleep very soft very heavy sleep very comfortable sleep use the logic why are we making these thing it's about sleep rest but i am not rest i am not sleeping i have to take pills what's the wrong material much much better now what's the wrong wrong here wrong within our mind too much stress too much depress too much worry too much fear where they come from they come from greedy arrogance attachment anger all those mental affliction you know it's it's completely polluted how can they keep rest those negative emotions dancing in there right this stuff there's not externally <coughs> disturbing but they are internal disturber which are those mental afflictions thinking too much here there that's why you know all those trouble one of the causes of those trouble selfish mind every day thinking self me me power money then i am happy when you got it not happy right is you know that way we know this way therefore those problem come from selfish understanding this advantages of selfish through that you learning how to change how to remove those this selfish then next step advantages of cherish to others and to beings when you cherish to others how much advantages when you have love when you real you know cherish to other beings you have natural sort of like a calm very pleasure everybody wants to talk everybody wants to be your friends when you go to the office when you go to the work everybody wants to be friend you know using your own your own experience in your office somebody very selfish person somebody very good warm heart you automatically wants to friend for this guy right you don't wants to uh, associate with that selfish person you don't like that similarly if you become like that same other sense other beings can see that way that's why advantages of cherish to others you know you cherish is unconditional love genuine unconditional by your heart friendship and that friendship is become real friend friend by money friend by power is not real your friend this is your money friend this is your po- power friend when you finish when you lose your money those friends are gone finish nothing there friends by heart genuine love compassion to others those friend every time there when you struck those the friends are there you know that's the, the uh, advantages of change to others that fourth switching changeable how can we change that's so called uh switching the self and other right switching it's changing switching exchanging yeah exchanging of self and other cherish you know how to exchange it then through the tonglen meditation you know uh, giving and taking give out of love take out of compassion through that tonglen meditation you know, called tonglen tibetan word which called give and take giving meditation is out of love 
take out of compassion. Take other suffering out of compassion. Give your good things to others out of love. Through that you can exchange self and other cherished mind. Through that you can generate bodhicitta, which is the Manjushri lineage of uh, generating bodhicitta. Now it is clear, right? Manjushri, yeah, Manjushri and Maitreya Buddha, two different lineage here in order to generate conventional bodhicitta. All the mind training, these things, we do have so many, eight verses of training the mind, and seven point of training the mind, or hundred uh, object of training the mind. There's so many mind training practice. All those mind training practice is come from Manjushri lineage. You know, for that lineage, it comes all those, all those, you know, uh, mind training practice uh, comes from Manjushri lineage. Therefore, you know, if you go, this transformation practice, where there, how this come from Buddha side? Means it's, it's go from here to uh, Atisha, then to uh, Shantideva, then it, you can go to Nakajuna through that Manjushri, through that Buddha. And all those practice, it's come through the Buddha to Manjushri to Nakajuna, all those lineage. It's called the lineage of profound view. Therefore, the, this today, eight verses of training the mind when we're doing practice here is exchanging you know, the self and other cherishing mind or thought transformation with that practice is the lineage of a profound view from that lineage. Therefore, therefore, that lineage is a little bit scholar. You know, it's real analytical. We have to analyze. It's use much wisdom. To exchange these things, you have to use much wisdom. There were wisdom I mentioned earlier. First, equanimity and disadvantages of selfish, advantages of other cherished mind, and how to exchange through the Dhanlin meditation, through that you can exchange your selfish into cherished to other, neglecting to other instead of neglect self. There was that kind of exchanging. Uh, it's called uh, uh, lineage of profound view lineage. Therefore, here we are going to do this practice. Now first, this stanza is general in us talking about a conventional bodhicitta, right? Conventional bodhicitta, which means that bodhicitta source, the main seed or main causes of that bodhicitta is compassion. Compassion is the main seed. But in order to generate compassion, compassion in, in, in uh, the word we are using, compassion, which means seeking others, you know, wishing them to be free from their suffering. Like uh, the definition of compassion, which means, oh, may all sentient beings be free from suffering. That wish is called compassion. Therefore, when you say compassion, which means, means you have to think. Because if you don't know the definition of compassion, then when you meditate, compassion meditation, which means what's mean by compassion? You know, if you don't know exactly that definition of compassion, very difficult to meditate on compassion. Therefore, here compassion means seeking all sentient beings. Like object is all sentient beings, including your enemies, completely equally, looking same equal, and seeing their suffering. Therefore, you generating from deep of your heart wish to free from their suffering. That desire, that wish, is called compassion. Therefore, in order to generate compassion to other sentient beings, first, self-compassion. Without self-compassion, there's no way other compassion. It's, no, it's not going to work. Just surface helps, but not going very deep. Therefore, it's called self-compassion. Self-compassion in Buddhist, the word we call renunciation. Renunciation, which means self-compassion. Self-compassion, what's mean by self-compassion? Self-compassion, which means, oh, I have to make rich, I have to take care of my family, that's why I have to reach, or I have need the power. This is not self-compassion. Self-compassion, which means real, how to make self-happiness, how to free self-suffering, you know, which means self-suffering, where they come from. Man, the suffering, not, they are not looking external condition, the root causes. From beginningless to till today, you know, we believe beginningless. 
our previous, 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 previous life to till today, suffering, suffering, suffering. There were those suffering, the main causes, where they come from. Those causes is our ignorance, selfish, you know, anger, hatred, all those mental afflictions are the root causes of all mental sufferings. There was self-compassion, which means wish to free from those suffering, specific wish to free from your mental affliction, suffering of mental affliction. It's called pervasive suffering. There were there are the suffering, three different levels of suffering. When Buddha taught, it's, it's interesting, when first Buddha, when he achieved the enlightenment, after 49th, he achieved enlightenment in Bodhgaya, you know, in India. It's called Bodhgaya, under the Bodhi tree. When he achieved enlightenment, after 49th day, first he taught uh, uh, the Dharma, it's called Four Noble Truths, which is all Buddhist, you know. This is the one of the very important practice. Among the Four Noble Truths, first he taught truth of suffering. And now that's truth of suffering, which means what's mean by suffering. Today, we also don't know import, like some suffering. That's why first we have to recognize real what are the suffering. My understanding, like our understanding of suffering, it's one of the gross level of suffering. Suffering of stress, family problem, suffering of disease, suffering of death, only this. There were Buddha says there's a three, three different level of suffering. The first, suffering of suffering. It's general suffering. You know, oh, I have a family problem, I have a business problem, health problem, emotional suffering, mental suffering, where the general worldly described as a suffering, which are then called suffering of suffering. There's a next level of suffering, the changing suffering, suffering of changing. Suffering of changing, which means worldly happiness, worldly pleasure. When the worldly described as a happiness, which is actually these all are suffering of changing. Therefore, all happiness of buying a car, happiness of getting a job, happiness of promoting your power, all these are real happy? No, they are suffering of change. These are change. They are not going to stay that way. These happiness will change, change into suffering. That's why you call suffering of changing. Then third, pervasive suffering. What is the pervasive suffering? Pervasive suffering which means suffering of mental affliction. Suffering of under the control of mental affliction. And that suffering, why it's called pervasive? Because it's pervade all sentient beings, from God realm to hell realm. All the realms has that problems. Mental affliction suffering, very rich, even king, prime minister, or president, to the street people. Everybody has <coughs> suffering of anger. Suffering of attachment, suffering of ignorance, suffering of jealousy, suffering of ego, pervasive suffering. Therefore, you're thinking these suffering and you're generating desire. Wow, if I live under the control of anger, everything, you know, under the control of attachment, that means there's no real happy. Therefore, in order to reach happiness, which means I have to remove those mental afflictions, Therefore, you're generating strong desire, wish to free from all the suffering, even causes of suffering, your own mental afflictions. That kind of desire called renunciation, self-compassion. Then when you have that feeling, then you apply to other sentient beings. Then it's become real compassion. Therefore, first renunciation, then compassion to all sentient beings, then your unusual attitude, then go to the bodhicitta in a bodhicitta practice. That's the state. Therefore, here, I will learn to hold them supremely dear. That's very important. That kind of compassion in order to generate bodhicitta. Compassion is the seed. Very, very seed. Then second stanza. This is the just general bodhicitta, right? Main, main topic. Now, next, whenever I associate with others, I will learn to think of myself as the lowest among all and respectfully hold others as a being supreme from the deep of my heart. That means, now when you feel that, I really want to develop bodhicitta, I really have to generate my compassion. When you really feel, now when you put it into the practice, when you put it into the practice, first obstacle, 
ego as the first obstacle. Ego, why first obstacle? Ego which, like a, like a sort of, like a, we call negative pride, or, or it's called like arrogance. I am supreme. I, I know everything. You know, you don't need to tell me. I am much important. You guys are not that much important. Seeking others lower, you are higher. That's the ego. First obstacle. That's why Buddhists, even small sadhana, small sadhana, you know, the practice prayer book, we call seven limb practice, seven limb prayer. Most of the seven limb prayer, first our practice is prostration. That's because first obstacle, ego. Ego comes every time first problem. Therefore, in order to remove that ego, we're doing prostration, humble attitude. Why? Why ego is first? You know, because person, when you become a practitioner, being a practitioner, which means you have to deal with your own mental affliction, right? You have to find your mistake. You have to change your mind negative to positive. That's the main practice. In order to change, in order to remove your mental affliction, first you have to know this is the mistake. In order to know this kind of mistake, you have to look yourself. Ego, not looking yourself. Say, I know everything, just looking out. That's why we call negative, negative pride, ego. Don't want to look. I am pure. I don't need to change. You guys have to change. That's, then you are not looking yourself. If you don't look yourself, how can you find your problem? You never ever find your own mistake. If you don't find your mistake, how can you change it? There's no way to change. In order to change first, you have to know there is a trouble, right? In order to remove your disease first, you have to know there is a disease. There is something problem there. If you don't see the problem, how can you change? No way. Therefore, first big obstacle is the ego. Ego, it's, it's shutting down all the doors. It's just only looking out, never looking themselves. Therefore, there's no way to find their own mistake. If you don't find your mistake, there's no way to change. Whatever they do, never ever become real practice. Real practitioner, which means transforming, transforming your thought from negative to positive. In order to change that, we have to know that. Therefore, first, ego. Therefore, when ego is the first, that's why in order to, when you feel like real, I have to generate compassion. I have to generate bodhicitta. When you feel that, first obstacle, ego, right? Then when you see real, I have an ego. I am arrogance. I think I'm, I know everything. You know, I have something feeling. How can I change that? How can I remove my ego? Then the stanza. Whenever I associate with others, I will learn to take, think of myself as the lowest among all. That's ego. What they're doing, never see I'm the lowest. I'm the supreme, right? <laughs> Completely opposite. I know everything. I am important. You are, you are the lowest. They were here, completely change. Whenever I associate with other people, I will learn to think of myself as, as the lowest, lowest among all, and respectfully hold others as a being supreme from the deep of my heart. It's not by word. It's not just something word. It comes from your own heart, from deep of your heart, seeking respectfully hold others as the supreme. From deep of your heart, you, you, you can be very much to, what to stay very lower. Therefore, when you stay very lower, very humble attitude, you're opening all the doors. You know, you're opening all the doors. When you open the other doors, it means you're listening to others. When the ego comes, you're not listening. Even right, wrong, doesn't matter. You're not listening. When you're not listening, how can you, how can you find the problem? No way. Therefore, when you become very humble attitude, respect to all others, you're opening your heart. Then you're listening. When you listen, then you heard, oh, this problem. Oh, my behave problem. Oh, my doing these words are problem. Oh, where my action is problem. 
a way of my showing face a problem, a way of my using words, maybe there's something problem, a way of my thinking is problem. You find so many mistakes. And that's when you see those mistakes, then you will think, oh, I have to change. Then you can go to the change. Therefore, in order to do that, how can I stay lowest? What's mean by lowest? Is lowest means I have to stay floor, but that lowest? Mental lower, right? It's not physical lower. Therefore, mental lowest, how can we generate? How can I generate respect to other sentient beings? Which means when you look others' good qualities, others' good quality, then you can learn. Then that can, when you see others' good quality, that will help you to make humble attitude. Like even small butterfly. When the butterfly flying on your flowers like that, right now we think, I'm a human being, much more important. I know so much. This butterfly, what they know? They don't know. I'm the much more important. We think that. Therefore, in that way, how can I make humble attitude? Or oh, this simple butterfly don't know that much, but never ever harms to other sentient beings. He just takes what he has to eat. That's all. Never making trouble to other sentient beings. I'm very educated person. Compared with the butterfly, much more understanding. But I'm making lots of trouble. I fighting to other people, I treating badly, I telling lie, or I stealing, or I abusing to others, or I you know doing all those horrible things to others, harming to others. On that level, I am shame. Compared with the butterfly, don't know that much, never ever harms to other sentient beings. Just taking this essence, that's all. <laughs> We, the human being, damaging environment, need too much. And that's why we fight, we treat, we kill everything we're doing. And that moment, I have to be shy, I have to be shamed compared with this butterfly. When you look, your disadvantage, your negative things, their positive quality, when you look on that way, it really helps you to make humble respect to this, these beings. That's why the, whenever you associate with others, we are opposite, right? Whenever we associate with others, we're looking at others' negative things. Oh, this guy throwing, talking nonsense, this guy wearing this, 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 this guy doing this, this. We just looking every negative, saying, my, uh, I'm a good person. I didn't make trouble. I did this. You know, we just see that way. They will hear the change that mind. Living in this kind of life, there's nothing benefit. There's no benefit instead of benefit, anger, ego, more and more problems. Through understanding that through your own experience, today I change, okay, I can try. Whenever I associate with other people, I will try to look their good qualities instead of bad quality. That way you look what you see to different. What you see depends on what kind of mind you have. It doesn't mean I'm looking that, doesn't mean I'm seeing that. Even if you look very positive thing, you can see negative if your heart is negative, right? Therefore, what you see depends on what kind of mind you have. If you are full of pride, ego, you only see others wrong. You only see you are the supreme good. That's why here, whenever I associate with others, I will learn first, I will learn to think myself as the lowest, which means I will learn, oh, this person who really cooks very good, I appreciate, you know, in a, a restaurant or something. Oh, this, this person who cooks these things. Oh, this person who knows how to fix my car. On that level, I don't know. His education is much better. Each individual has something good qualities there. They will look on these good qualities, apply it to yourself. I don't have that. That's why you make it very humble. That's why it can create your humble attitude. When you're able to generate real respect, attitude to other sentient beings, this is the first step to exchanging, transforming your mind. Therefore, in order to transform your mind from negative to positive, first we have to open mind, recognize your own problems, then, second thing is change, how I can change. Therefore, here first, first stanza is bodhicitta. That's the mean we have to change. We have to change to bodhicitta. 
gives you idea. Second, in order to change, in order to generate bodhicitta, first obstacle is ego. Therefore, in order to stop that ego, then that stanza, you know, you can recite that second stanza again and again when you go to the public area, say, or whenever I associate with others, I will learn to think of myself as the lowest among all and respectfully hold others as a being supreme from depth of my heart. Recite again and real think from mentally. Think again, again, and that really gives you some kind of uh, the idea to humble and open your heart and listen and find your own mistake. To find other mistake, you can't change it. Instead of change, angry. And this, that. Find your mistake, you can change it. <coughs> That's why, you know, when you look, if there's no benefit, then why? We have to look on that way. There's nothing benefit. Instead of benefit, if they're making trouble, don't, not, don't need to look on that way. Thereby, individually, when you find your own mistake, that's the very good. Now I can change that way. This is lots of benefit. Therefore, in order to find that kind of things, this is very important. Humble attitude every day. Humble attitude is it's sort of very lower, lower person, very sort of like a down, right? Very down person, listening, respecting toward others. When you have that kind of attitude, when you respect to others, other will respect you. Other will, other people will trust you. You know, when you disrespect, you think, I have money, I have power. Therefore, I don't need to respect. These people have to respect because I am paying them. Negative thoughts. People will going to do respect, physical respect. Respect to your power, not to you. That's very clear. When you lost your power, there's no respect. Therefore, one of the best respect attitude, trust, is come from deep of your heart. Respect to others. Therefore, in order to respect to others, this is the one of the best stanza. Very important stanza. Therefore, reciting these things every day, you can use that. I can first learn. When I go to the office, I will learn that. Respect. Humble attitude. Understanding what is my mistake instead of other recognizing my own mistake, then how can I change that? And other people, I will try to see their good qualities. And when you look on that way again and again, eventually it's become a habit. Then every time when you look, real, very great quality, very good quality, very good. It's change way of your seeing. You feel you learn so much things from others. You know, it doesn't matter to learn, which means you need a teacher or something. You can learn so many things from others, even like a insects, small insects. You can learn, even like a butterfly. Just going there, taking only nectar without destroying that flower, colors, shapes, everything. They just take things, fly, right? No trouble. We human beings not like that. You need to eat, sometimes destroy it. So much messy. Then going out. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Therefore, even we learn on those butterflies, you know, still living, shining, everything there, just they're taking what they need, it clean. Just we call hair. When your hair stuck in the butter, when you take the hair, it's coming very clean hair. It never ever comes with the butter. Right? Butter stay there. Just only hair. Separate. We are not mixed together, everything mixed, then confused. Half you have to kick it out, half there, living. Confused, so much. Therefore we learn these things, even small butterfly, from animals like, oh, they're taking without damage that, we also do that. Go to the office, what's the purpose? Work, it's not for argue, it's not for fight, it's not for this thing. Problem there, we have to solve the problem. Solve the problem, do your work, that's all. Now we are over. You know this guy? Oh, his wife something, something is doing. His hus her husband is doing something, something. She is doing this, this, this. So much, which is, you know, nothing. It's nothing. But going to the office, everything looking this way. Then thoughts, you know, too much confused. Then what's going on, you don't know. Then angry, hatred, so much superstitious, guessing. 
this, that, that, making huge, big. We're just nothing there. We own making these things, mixing all these things by ego. Ego, that's the point. I am a good person. They are not good because their family this, this, this. Because their husband is like that. Their wife is something, something. Putting so much things to try to make bad. And why are they making this? I have ego. That's, there's no any reason. Ego, which means I have to be a good person. When you have to make good, you have to make other bad. That you feel like I'm good. Good is not exist by its own. Good is depend on bad. Therefore, when you make bad, you feel like I'm good, right? Like a tall and short. Tall, short is not exist by its own. This finger today, you say, oh, this is tall finger. This is short finger. Actually, this tall because this is short. It's not by its own because when this finger comes, <laughs> it's going to chart, right? It's not by that. You have dependently. Therefore, if you make your good, you have to make other bad. You don't know why we're doing because I have ego. That's the reason. Out of ego, when you look at others, you have to make bad. It just comes that way. It's going on that way. And that's every day looking that, every day talking about that. This is meditation. Like you are med we are meditating on others bad. That's why result, because of that meditation, make us angry, hatred, you know, stopping, destroying your relation toward others. All the trouble, it comes on that way. Therefore, first, ego, very important to try to reduce. Therefore, here today, only we're going two stanza. Here, first stanza is general bodhicitta. This is the, my main practice. I have to develop that. If I reach that, that bodhicitta will lead me in enlightenment, my goal. But in order to do this practice, first obstacle here is ego. Second stanza, in, in order to put it into the practice, I have to be carefully to reduce my ego. I have to be open. I have to be listen to others. I have to be a humble attitude. I have to be respect to the others. That will, I can find my own troubles, problems. That, then I will going to change it. Therefore, second stanza is it's a very nice stanza. It's real important to, to understand and put it into the practice. Put it into the practice, which means when you go to tomorrow, when, when you go to the work, real recite that stanza and try. You know, when those ego still comes up, say, when they, oh, this, this guy said, no, 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 it's my ego making now. Just go down, go down. Try to look, try to find the good good work, try to find others, try to find myself mistake. That can change. Other mistake, I can't change it. That whenever these thoughts, small things comes up, try to push, stop, you know, prevent, get rid of, and try again, again, then eventually it will be changed. Okay, that's the today, uh, first and second stanza, and tomorrow maybe going to do maybe two stanza, and then, uh, we have four days, right? Yeah. Therefore, next, maybe maybe tomorrow, th uh, three stanza. Day after tomorrow, maybe two stanza. Then last one stanza is the main. And then last stanza is about the ultimate bodhicitta. It's about the reality. It's very philosophy. Therefore, maybe we can last day, maybe we'll talk about that philosophy. Okay, that's today. Uh, thank you very much. And if you have any Questions. Um, what do you do, or how do you address somebody who's like maybe starting out with meditation, and it seems like in the beginning, like all this meditation is causing more suffering. You know, you're sitting there, it's very sore in the legs, very sore in the bum, you know, like, and uh, and it seems like you're looking at yourself and you're a very bad person. So many negative states of mind and so initially it, it's seeming like this, all this compassion, all this technique is causing more problems and then it's easy just to go back to, you know, eating and yeah. drinking and, and this is seeming like it's easier to do that, you know. I know in the long term it's working but yeah. in the beginning it seems like it's causing more problems. Yeah, this is because of, uh, before you meditate, your intention, therefore you have to set up the intention I'm meditating 
The reason is to change myself, to change negative thoughts, emotions, to change those, all those troubled things. Therefore, when you have that kind of motivation, out of that, now external, these small things, are, if they're uncomfortable, you can sit more comfortable like chair or these things, you can change it. But the mentally, you know, feel like, oh, I have angry, I'm a bad person, I'm this, this. When these things come, some people feel guilty, and I don't want to look that way. You know, that means your intention is wrong. Therefore, if you set up the intention when you meditate, I'm meditating here to change my mental affliction, to remove those. That's why each time when I find my anger, I have to be happy. I found it. I have to change it like a disease. There's somebody, the people have disease, they don't know what kind of disease, that they know there's something wrong. Try to go this doctor, try to go this doctor, still don't know. When they find the disease, they are very enjoy. I found it. Now we can treat it, right? That's intention. They have the same time when you found those anger and hate it, you feel like joy. Real now I have found my trouble is there. I have every trouble in my office. Now I don't know it's confused. Now I realize I have a pride. My, I have anger. These two are making me proud. When you found it, instead of you feel guilty, you feel joy. Because now you're looking, I can change that. Therefore, these things are before you meditate, you know, it's I'm treating myself. I have to change. Therefore, I'm looking, find the problems, I will going to change. That's why I'm meditating. Therefore, when you set up that motivation, through that when you meditate, there's no, yeah, in things comes up, you feel much more happy. That, yeah, that's the way, it's, it's motivation. Yeah. <coughs> all the time, things go around all the time. They just go around and around. You can actually see around and not finishing. Yeah, you change on different way. You, when you change real your heart from negative to positive, it's not going to be round. Some people changing, which is very much external, causes the same causes. Just changing the color, changing the shape, sort of like that. How much you change it, it comes same, because out of attachment, it's one of the things. Out of attachment, we're changing. We're changing the color of your car, color of our house, or maybe shape of our house. Then next time, we have, after we have to change again. We're changing, changing because of attachment. It's like a threat. And the mala, you know, the mala here, but the threat is attachment. Therefore, if you don't change that threat, how much mala change is can go, 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 come again, right? It's go, 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 come again. Therefore, we have to change that threat. If you cut it, the threat, then they're not going like that. They will hear the change. It's not external change. It's a change internal. Therefore, if you change like self, ego, ego grasping or ego like uh, arrogance toward respect attitude, toward humble attitude, you change real. Then that respect attitude, we don't need to change that. That's the, when you already change that, all your physical, everything is going to be changed. Then it can stay that way. What like, I, yeah, what I find is I uh, overanalyze detail. detail. Uh -huh. you know, like I find the, the negative thing is something that I go into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. This, and this. this. Everyone, you know, like they first, they second, yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's. Yeah, these kind of things, yeah, for instance, like compassion. Compassion has a cross, subtle, 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 right? Like compassion oneself, then compassion to family, then compassion to the neutral beings, then compassion to the enemies, then compassion to all sentient beings. Then not only compassion, wish to help, unusual attitude of compassion. It can go subtle, subtle, but when this kind of changing, its seat is same but it's going much detail, 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 then finally, when that attitude comes, that's the only the goal, then there's no way to change it. That's the last level of wish to help, that's all. Now, now the changing is, how can we help? Now you have to jump next step, you know, take different types of helping, but that is the seed. Therefore, you have to, it's not one side, 
from one to go detail to the when you go more 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 detail all those practices become much much solid much much deeper there was that next practice have helped by previous practice when a previous practice can help to next practice it's everything has a link and that it's not like just finish or something comes again back there's no going to be back because you have a wish to how to all sentient beings if you finally looking very big level it's not coming like only me 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 it's not coming out next stage it's not coming back that you are looking very big there is in that level it's not going back but it's going more deeper 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 it's only one it's not like mala right it's going more much 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 deeper that can change but finally when they reach that level then there's no way to change that's the finalist Okay, then do you have any questions? Send it number of disciple uh, to the uh, can live here. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Tibetan king uh, who's Chan Ju at the Hishi who uh, invite Atisha into Tibet, and then through, he gave all those teachings to one of the, his disciples called Trom Dunba, Trom Dun Jumne, great, great practitioner. He's lay person, he's not a monk, lay practitioner, very great. From him, then his disciple is called Katamba lineage, you know, come from that. But one of the, the lineage uh, holder, very great master, Katamba Kishi Langri Tamba, uh, great practitioner. Kadamba, which means external, physical, very clean, which means pure, simple practitioner, not complicated. And internally, a great Mahayana practice, full of bodhicitta, and very scholar, same time, uh, uh, understanding the ultimate reality, very scholar. Secretly, they're practicing Vajrayana. Uh, that's the Kadamba tradition, which is externally just simple stays a monk or lay whatever very simple life inner every time you know that the, their heart or their mind is full of bodhicitta based on love and compassion to all sentient beings then secretly are uh, they doing vajrayana practice that's uh, the katamba tradition they were one of the katamba kishi langritamba uh, this teaching Eight verses of thought transformation before it's very secret it's not for the public only the teacher gives to their own student very serious student it's not very public when the Katamba Keshe Langritamba and the, uh, when he comes and he feel like future these kind of important teaching will be going to be disappear there is worry about it therefore he wrote that eight verses and make like popular uh, to general teaching, he gives everybody. Therefore, from him, it's this trans uh, thought transformation practice become uh, what they call open. Open, yeah, open. Uh, why do you say it is secret? Because in order to do thought transformation, to change, change. Today we have selfish self-centered attitude me 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 is very important right we neglect to others other not that much important therefore transformation which means instead of selfish or self-cherish it's a cherish to others instead of neglect to others again, neglect self that kind of you not know, change it's very very difficult that's why they try to keep very secret because most of people they can't do that practice. That's why they keep very secretly. Now it's become yeah very open after Kishi Langri Tamba comes. Through that, it's become very popular in in Tibetan uh, during that time. Therefore, here the essence of teaching uh, here uh, eight verses of you know training the body. The essence of point is it's called conventional bodhicitta and ultimate bodhicitta. Conventional bodhicitta, which is the method, it's sort of like there are so many 
level so many different sort of method in order to, in order to achieve enlightenment which means in order to achieve ultimate peace ultimate happiness then there's a two way and our method and wisdom we have to use two therefore the method side one of the best method is conventional bodhicitta why it is called best method compassion is very important very good but the bodhicitta which means seeking to achieve enlightenment to sake of all sentient beings which means he knows all sentient beings has buddha nature which means every being has the potential to overcome their suffering and every being has the potential to achieve enlightenment he sees these people are sees that therefore they never ever give up how much problem they never gives up because they have they know those beings to their problem but eventually they will going to achieve enlightenment therefore they never give up that kind of bodhicitta it's not only sort of blind it comes with the wisdom who understanding the problem where they comes from how to solve the problem where the problems you know from which way you can solve the problems therefore that bodhicitta comes with the wisdom very intelligent wisdom that's why who seeking to achieve enlightenment why you wants to achieve enlightenment because to to benefit for others but to benefit for others why you have to achieve enlightenment because the trouble you know in this world like individual problem world major problem the seed the root seed the trouble where they come from troubles come from our ignorance ignorance has two ignorance ones who don't know what is the right there is another ignorance completely opposite who grasp who who believe completely opposites and that ignorance is like we call wrong view or misconception misconsciousness or complete un, uh, belief completely opposite that that kind of ignorance there were this true ignorance but the ignorance which is wrong view misconceptual ignorance one of the worst ignorance all the trouble comes from that that when our mind don't know what is the truth what is the right most of like us the way, way we believe it's completely <coughs> opposite mistaken belief because of that wrong perception is it stays deep of our heart therefore every because of those wrong perception wrong belief they create anger hatred jealousy pride attachment all those negative thoughts and emotions when the person dominant by those negative thoughts and emotion they think they planning everything negatively because thought come from mind the way your mind is negative misunderstanding your thinking misunderstanding mis what we call wrong thinking right then your planning become a wrong mistake planning mistake planning because of that we act mistake mistake action another words called karma mistake action act mistake result then suffering therefore all our problem all our trouble suffering the root causes is come from that ignorance now in order to remove that in order to remove all the suffering we have to remove that ignorance but in order to remove that ignorance only the thing is just prayer is not going to work it's very good i'm praying every day it's very good it's accumulating virtues merit but just only prayer is not going to work if that work then why we sending children to the school right we sending your own children to the school why we sending because those children has too many ignorance don't so many things don't understand in order to remove that ignorance you have to send to school educate try to understand what is the right education right education is mental education because ignorance is mental mental part of things in order to change that only you have to know what is the right what is this what is that each time when you know 
each things, same time you're removing your ignorance. Therefore, just prayer, if they solve the, every problem, then very easy. We don't need to meditate just every day, just pray it. Very easy way. It's not. You can look yourself. When you're very much angry, just pray, as real your anger is gone. Sometimes not. Sometimes maybe be praying, oh, this guy going to be hell realm. We pray about to, to go hell realms. You know, very negative prayer. Sometimes people can do that way. That's why it, it's not about the, only the prayer. Prayer is very good, very important, but only just prayer is not going to work. We problem is ignorance. Therefore, in order to remove that ignorance, we have to know what is the truth, what is the reality. There is a conventional truth, conventional reality. There are very deep down, ultimate truth, ultimate reality. There were we, today, we both confused. We don't know ultimate reality and also conventional reality. So much we don't know. That's why, because of that ignorance, then anger, attachment, all those mental affliction, misconception, all those mental afflictions are part of ignorance. Why, how you know this is part of ignorance? Very simple. We angry, why are you angry? Because we are suffering. Somebody did that, somebody talked to, I'm suffering. That's why we angry, to try to change that suffering, angry. But anger, did they really move your problem? No, they make more problems. But our foolish thoughts don't know that way. We angry, try to shout it. Is they real solve our problem? Never solve. That's why ignorance. Don't know. You angry because you don't want to live like that kind of problems. But when you angry, when you shout it, you're making more problems. But still we don't know that. These are the part of ignorance who don't know what is your heart wanted. Therefore, all the mental afflictions are the part of ignorance. Now, in order to remove ignorance, we really have to know what is the reality, what's the truth. Therefore, in order to know truth or reality, somebody has to teach because students have to send to class. They need teacher, right? If there's no teacher, then why you have to send to school and class? We have, because somebody has to. We don't know that. That's why we have to rely on somebody else. Therefore, in order to help to other sentient beings, benefit to other sentient beings, which means those beings who are seeking to achieve enlightenment, we call bodhisattvas, to achieve enlightenment, when you achieve enlightenment, you have a special power called omniscient mind. The mind or the perception perceive each and all phenomena. And when you reach that level, then much easier to teach each individual because each individual has different brain, different brain capacity, therefore you have to teach different. You can't teach just only one, have to, everybody have to accept it. It's not going to work. Like a, like a teaching, dharma is like a food. You know, some people like Chinese food, some people like French food, some people like Indian food, right? You can't say everybody have to accept Indian food, everybody have to accept Chinese food. It's not going to work. Some, that's the each individual has different body, different choice, different sort of like a brain capacity. Therefore, when you achieve enlightenment, then you can read, okay, for those portions, that those beings, I can give this kind of teaching. For that kind of people, I can give that kind of teaching. For this kind of people, I can give this kind of teaching. Very suitable. Then order to teach, which means you're educating them. You're giving you knowledge. Therefore, when you educate the person, individual, when they understand, that wisdom can remove their own ignorance. Therefore, when you're able to remove each, one by one, remove your ignorance, you are getting closer, closer, closer to the enlightenment. And another word, you are getting closer, closer to the ultimate happiness because we are suffering because of those too many ignorance there. Each ignorance, when you clean it, you are cleaning more, more, more your suffering, physical suffering, mental suffering, because you are cleaning your own ignorance. That's why bodhicitta, which is one of the best ways to 
help to other sentient beings who are seeking when you achieve enlightenment, then you can be able to teach, then you can be able to help to other sentient beings to remove their suffering, educate them, and try to give the message to understanding where the problems come from. Therefore, that bodhicitta never ever gives up, who knows that's the way you can fix, you can help to other sentient beings. Very compassion, very un unconditional love with the very marvelous wisdom who know how to fix the problems. Without wisdom, compassion, sometimes frustrate, right? I'm, I wish everybody have to be happy, happy. Now they are not happy. I frustrate. You know, that's, that's not because of compassion. That means because of lack of wisdom. Don't know that. That's why frustration. There were sometimes people complaining to the compassion. Oh, compassion is not good. Makes you frustrated. Makes you sad. Makes you something like a very uh, depressed. Because these words, you can see how much people are struggling. And uh, when you think about that, makes you sad, makes you very uncomfortable feeling. That's why you don't need to think about compassion. People blame. It's not compassion. Because of lack of wisdom, don't know how to fix. Compassion is very pure. You care about others. Very good. You care. You want to help. This is very important mind. But unfortunately, lack of wisdom, then don't know how to do that. That's why I frustrate. Therefore, when you feel that way, have to not blame to the compassion, blame to your own wisdom, not enough wisdom, right? Therefore, bodhicitta, which means real, it's assistance with a very, very in, intelligent wisdom who really knows how to fix. That's why it never ever gives up. And that kind of bodhicitta, you know, is one of the best altruism intention, one of the best method to achieve enlightenment. Without this method, there's no way to achieve enlightenment. That's why conventional bodhicitta. Then ultimate bodhicitta is the wisdom. Therefore, in order to develop that com uh, uh, conventional bodhicitta, you need that wisdom who understanding the ultimate reality. That's why ultimate, ultimate bodhicitta, which means the, the the consciousness, the perceiver, the mind, who perceive ultimate reality. Every phenomenon, the, uh, what they call, uh, the reality of, uh, like, a, uh, ultimate. They deep, the, how the things exist, their real understanding, like, a deep down, real, what is the truth. That when you know the truths, then that knower, that perception, can remove all those misconceptions. That's why the ultimate uh, bodhicitta is one of the best as, uh, assistance of conventional bodhicitta. Also, this is one of the best wisdom to purify your own ignorance. Conventional bodhicitta is something you supporter, encouraging you. Re real who's working, ultimate bodhicitta. It's like a wisdom sword. It's cut all the poison trees, that the wisdom who cutting all those ignorance, therefore when the wisdom who remove the ignorance, then you, you can remove, you can remove your anger, you can remove all those mental afflictions, because those mental afflictions are based, based on ignorance. That's why these two truth, these two bodhicitta, it's sort of like one of the uh, main uh, causes of to achieve enlightenment. Therefore, these two are the essence, essence you know, of uh, uh, to achieve enlightenment. That's why uh, Mahayana practitioner, specific Mahayana practitioner, uh, conventional bodhicitta and ultimate bodhicitta is the main practice. Without these two, there's nothing, nothing Mahayana. You know, no way, whatever Vajrayana you're doing, whatever initiation, whatever empowerment, it's not going to work without these two foundation. Therefore, these two is like, like a birds. When they cross to the river, cross to the ocean, they need two wings, right? One wing is not going to work. Two wings, through that you can cross. You, when you cross to the samsara, 
through these two wings, cross to samsara to achieve the freedom of samsara, freedom of ignorance, freedom of uh, mental afflictions, freedom of suffering of men, uh, samsara through these two wings. That's why here the eight verses of training the mind is it's, uh, it's about these two uh, bodhicitta.